Now it is time to test your knowledge. Download the exercises notebook from the description of this video and go through each of the exercises and try to figure out how to solve them on your own the best you can. Above every cell you see a description of exercise that tells you what you need to do, then you simply type it in the cell and run it. Some cells provide sample output. For example here, exercise tells you to create an array of five zeros and here we have a cell that shows you how the output should look like. Don't run the cell otherwise the output will be erased. So type your solution here and run the cell to see if you got it right. Now pause this video, go through each of the exercises in this notebook and see how well you will do. Pause it now and then I will continue and we will go through all of the exercises together. Okay, hopefully you have done all of the exercises and now I will take you through the solutions. First we will import NumPy. To create an array containing 5 zeros we simply type in p.zeros and pass it 5. To create an array of 15 sevens we again create uh, an array of zeros to create the array containing the basic number of elements that we want. So we want an array of 15 zeros and then we add 7 to each of the elements and that will generate an array of all the 7s. To create an array of all the integers between 5 and 10 we will use an arrange function and p.arrange. To create an array of all the odd integers we will again use and p.arrange between 0 and 10. We will specify the step 2 and then it will create all of the even integers. And to make them odd, we will simply add one to each of the elements. Now we have an array of all the odd integers. Alternatively, we could create an array of all the integers from 0 to 10 and use conditional selection to select only the odd elements. So here we use modulus operation and whenever the result is equal to 1, we know that the number is odd. And we have the same result as over here. Now let's create a matrix. First, we will need to create an array containing numbers from 1 to 9. Again, using simple arrange function, remember 1 will be inclusive and 10 will be exclusive, so 1 will be included in the array and all of the numbers up to but not including 10. This will be just a flat array and to turn it into a matrix, we will run reshape and give it the new shape of our matrix, in this case 3 by 3. To generate random floating point numbers, we are using np.random.run function and pass it 5 numbers. That will generate numbers from 0 to 1. If we want numbers to be in the range between 0 and 10, we simply multiply these numbers by 10. To generate numbers sampled from normal distribution, we are using randn function. It simply takes the numbers from the normal distribution instead of the linear. Now we need to create an array that looks like this. If you remember, we have learned about an inspace function that generates whatever amount of numbers that we want in the range between two numbers. Here we have two numbers 0 0.1 and 1 and we have 10 numbers in total. We simply run the in space from 0, 1 to, to 1 and in total we will have 10 numbers. Excellent. For future exercises we need to create a matrix with 16 elements and uh, it will be a 4x4 four four matrix. We will put it into a variable and we are ready to continue with our exercises. To grab the number 12 we simply use indices to get to the number that we want. Here the number 12 is in the third row and in the fourth column. And as you remember all of the indices are started with 0, so this row has index of 2 and this column has index of 3. So at a row 2 and the column 3 we have number 12. Selecting the first row of the matrix is extremely easy. We simply use one number to select the first row. To select the first column of the matrix will be a bit tougher because we need to remember how slicing works. In our square brackets, we'll tell NumPy to select all of the rows. So before, because first number represents rows, empty semicolon here will tell it to take all of the rows. Now we will tell it to take only one column. So if we will tell it to take only the first element of all of the rows, it will return first elements of all the rows, and this is what represents our first column. So it will look at all the rows and take first element from this one, this one, this one, and this one. And as a result, we will have our first column. Here the first column is represented as a flat array, so because we see here we have only one set of brackets, this is a horizontal array of numbers. If we want to literally take the column, that is a vertical column uh, within the matrix, we will tell it to grab the columns between 0 and 1. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but this syntax will take it to uh, grab the first column of the matrix. To select only a portion of the matrix, again we use indices, let's look at the matrix again. The portion of the matrix that we want to grab is over here, starting with 11, and we want to uh, grab it starting from the second index, which is the index of this row, and from the second index, uh, which is the index of this column. So that returns the last portion of this matrix. 
to calculate the sum of all the numbers in the matrix, we simply run the sum function, get the sum of all the rows, we again run the sum function. This time we will pass it access parameter, which will be equal to one, telling it to grab the sum of all the horizontal rows, and we see the result for each of the rows. Finally, to calculate the standard deviation, we will simply use an std function. Excellent. So that is that for exercises. Once again, remember that you can download all the sample notebooks from the description of this video. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to NumPy, and I will see you in my future videos.